Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 1st, 2022, recorded at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Today is the beginning of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season, and rightfully so. We have a new tropical storm that could be forming in the Gulf of Mexico heading towards Florida over the next several days, so let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we continue to have an area of disturbed weather that is mainly focused right now in near Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. And this is that area right here. Now, some of this is the remnant energy from Hurricane Agatha that was over the Eastern Pacific and made landfall in Mexico over the last several days. And Agatha has now begun to undergo its weakening phase where it is no longer kind of around, but that mid-level energy is still very much so there. And it has now translated into the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. So this is the area that we'll be watching over the next several days for possible tropical development. And this is the Tropical Weather Outlook from the National Hurricane Center put together at 2 p.m. Eastern Time this afternoon. Again, this is Invest Area 91L now officially designated as an invest. And this will be moving northeastward over the next several days towards Florida. And we could have a system approaching Florida and making landfall in Florida by Saturday uh, morning, really. Uh, Friday evening, Saturday morning, we could have something that is approaching Florida and making landfall in Florida by, by Saturday. So this weekend, we're already off to a wet, rainy, windy start across portions of Florida uh, for this weekend. And we also have this area of disturbed weather out here closer towards the Bahamas. Now, this is posing no real concern over the next several days, but this will be also heading off towards the north and east uh, as part of a much broader area of disturbed weather. Uh, but this really should not go on to develop over the next few days. And if we take a closer in look here at Invest Area 91L, again, we can see some of the areas that could be impacted here. Miami is in that area, Orlando, Melbourne, Florida, Tampa, Fort Lauderdale, uh, the Florida Keys, Key West. Some of those areas could experience some pretty heavy rainfall, and we'll talk about more specific uh, impacts uh, within just a minute or two here. So if we take a look here at the visible satellite imagery for Invest Area 91L, again, it got its designation earlier this morning. We notice that there's a pretty broad area of mid-level spin in the atmosphere here. And this mid-level spin has not worked its way down to the surface yet. So this is not a surface area of low pressure, but it is beginning to do so. If we take a look here at the visible satellite, you can kind of tell that we're starting to get some of those low-level cloud features to be pulled into this mass of low pressure. And this is beginning to signify that we could be getting the beginning stages of a surface low pressure. Now, again, just because we get a surface low pressure does not mean that this is going to be a tropical depression or storm yet. Uh, this will still take some time. The mid-level vorticity and associated spin is probably somewhere right around here. It's not under this area of thunderstorms because we are still getting a lot of shear. And if we take a zoomed out look here at the satellite imagery, we can actually tell what's going on here. So we can see that there's a fair amount of shear, especially in the Gulf of Mexico. If we look here at the upper level uh, flow here with these cirrus clouds, we notice that they're rapidly streaming off to and away from the center of the screen towards the east and northeast. And this is a good indicator that there's a lot of shear within this region. And because of that, we're not really going to be seeing much in the way of substantial organization in terms of anything that is vertically, significantly vertically aligned and able to intensify significantly. Now, if we take a look here at the Gulf of Mexico sea surface temperatures, we notice that the sea surface temperatures are running very warm, uh, about 28 to 29 degrees Celsius in this entire area. And this is the area that we'll be watching for over the next several days for if something tries to coalesce and congeal within this area. Now, with the water temperatures being this warm, it definitely goes to support some very intense convection. And we can see that if we take a look here at the infrared satellite, 
we have had intense convection developing through portions of the afternoon and certainly earlier this morning you had some of these negative 90 degrees celsius uh, uh 90 degrees celsius uh below um zero for these cloud top temperatures and that means that those were very tall thunderstorms very tall very organized thunderstorms uh, but obviously those have since waned uh, with the approaching diurnal minimum which is the area of least convection in the ocean and there's also a land uh, diurnal minimum too but this is over the ocean primarily now if we take a look here at the upper ocean heat content this map is updated as of this morning and what we continue to know here, and, and real quickly, upper ocean heat content, all it really simply is, it's just a measure of the depth of warm water. Tropical storms and hurricanes don't really like when there's cool water underneath the surface. Again, as I talked about yesterday, you could have water temperatures that are like 95 Fahrenheit, but if 10 meters below that, you have water temperatures that aren't 79 degrees Fahrenheit, well, then it doesn't really matter. Hurricanes aren't going to be able to really thrive in that type of environment. And so today, we notice that these warmer colors here, these lighter shades of blue on towards the teal, oranges, and reds here, all of this towards the right-hand side of the scale indicates higher upper ocean heat content with varying degrees. And what we notice here that was, this is the approximate location of 91L, and it is moving in this general direction over the next several days. Within this general area, we'll be expecting 91L to traverse. And it's going to traverse in this warm loop eddy that we've been talking about over the last several days. This warm loop eddy is going to be kind of the key here as we progress over the next several days because it provides additional warmth and support for intense thunderstorms. So as we get a system to move through here, we could definitely start to see uh, more organization occur. And for that, we'll take a look here at the models. So this is the 12Z GFS forecast, the 850 millibar vorticity. So the spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet above the ground. And we noticed that within the 12Z GFS run, if we back up the last several runs, we, we are starting to see how the model is beginning to focus this area of low pressure near Belize. And it has been more aggressive with that over the last several days. So this is generally speaking, a good sign for development. Now, if we move this forward over the next several days, we notice that the GFS actually does consolidate a storm pretty close to Florida here. Now, this could be attributed to some convective feedback problems. Um, again, it, there is the potential that this is having some convective feedback problems, so maybe overdoing intensity just a bit here. Uh, but if we take a look here at the 200 millibar wind, again, this is one of the problems. There's going to be a ton of shear, about 30 to 40 knots of shear just ripping across this area. And that's not really going to be very supportive for any type of storm to really be uh, thriving in. Now, there will be some diffluent flow aloft, diverging air at the surface, or diverging air aloft, converging air at the surface, and that might allow for a storm to develop. Now, if we take a look here at the 12Z European run, we notice that, again, the 12Z Euro is pretty similar to the last several runs here. It is a little bit weaker going towards Florida. It's about 1,002 to 1,001 millibars over Florida. And if we take a look here, again, you can kind of see what we're expecting. Rainy, windy, and just an overall sloppy type condition setup that we're expecting here. Now, one of the things, again, if we take a look here at the 250 millibar wind, uh, so this is up at about the cruising altitude of airliners close to 39,000 feet. We notice that there's a fair amount of shear within this region, still about 15 to 20 knots and not really conducive for much strengthening. So any storm that gets going in this region will have a tough time strengthening. If you take a look here at the European ensembles, this is the 6Z run. We notice that there's a large clustering now on the European ensembles that continue to focus towards Central Florida and South Central Florida. And on the GFS ensembles, the 12Z run, again, much of the same here, though there is a fair amount of spread here by 2 p.m. on Saturday 
anywhere from several members that are already crossed over Florida to several members and the majority of members that are still hanging around near the Florida Straits and the Florida Keys. So this definitely could be a significant rainmaker. Some of the rainfall predictions, again, I have started to see uh, some of those rainfall predictions could exceed uh, upwards of five to seven inches in localized spots. So certainly could be a rainy, windy setup, maybe the potential for a few tornadoes because there will be some dry air aloft and that might help to create the way for some tornadoes. Now it is June 1st, so it is the official start of the Atlantic hurricane season. And this is my official forecast going into the hurricane season. My official forecast is calling for 20 named storms. My forecast then also calls for eight hurricanes and four major hurricanes with a 65% chance of an above average hurricane season and a 22% chance of a hyperactive hurricane season. Bottom line, it's going to be a very busy hurricane season for sure. And definitely we have a long ways to go. So make sure you're prepared now because remember, it only takes one storm to ruin your life and change your life forever. All right. With that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon. Of course, I am Mike Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more over the next few days.